I've got to tell you, guys and girls, that I'm a little bit worried about you, to be fair. I'm a little bit worried about the world. Not. But I could be. Maybe I should be. Some people are. Lots of people are very worried and very angry. But I don't know whether you guys are like me. I'm, I'm just going to take it all in my stride. I will take a meteorite hit or a nuclear holocaust in my stride. I'm like a chameleon. I just turn my hand and my mind to whatever is present. I don't care how many lesbians and gays and freaks there are. I really don't, because I keep myself to myself. As you know, I walk up my empty streets, passing through my graveyard, and a few little rat runs like that. And I don't encounter these freaks. If I was dwelling in a very busy place and had to go into the city on a daily basis, I'm pretty sure that I would be repulsed by it all. Because I know whenever I do go into the cities, that's the effect the cities have upon me. They are becoming so nasty, aren't they? I'm pretty sure all of us, you guys and girls which are my age, similar, you grew up when our countries were our countries and our culture was our culture and Britain was British, France was French, Spain was Spanish, Italy was Italian and all that sort of stuff. But now you walk down the streets in Italy and you've got like, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing in this case, like Chinese restaurants, Bulgarian restaurants, Hungarian restaurants and all that sort of thing. Okay, the cuisine is a nice touch. But if you've got people donning different things and looking completely conspicuous and, you know, sinister, I was out with my daughter a couple of days ago, went to a garden centre in a small little British village uh, out in the country and then a whole family of Darth Vader's walked by not looking at anybody else not mingling with anybody else not having anything to do with anybody else and looking completely different from everybody else and wanting to be very very different from everybody else uh, and these people will never assimilate um, if the, the, the country and the globalists have their way we will see that more and more and they will be marauding more and more um, in their uh, individual cults. That's what they are, people. They're cults, aren't they? Of course, these religions. And so, um, you know, I don't see a lot of it. But I'm pretty sure lots of you do. And you have to live with it and work with it. And yet, you still couldn't be bothered or wasn't moved enough to watch my videos on the plagues that, that are coming over the world. The last few videos, you know, of course I have to be very, very careful what I say, um, because this channel will go the same way as all my other channels went. And I suppose it's only a matter of time. Um, when YouTube will take this channel down. And what they do, as you see, uh, they very often will bring in a new policy and then under the auspice of that policy, they will backdate and they will sweep through your whole channel to see if you've contravened any of their new policy guidelines. And if you have, boom, 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 you'll get three strikes and you're gone completely unfair it is 
They don't give you any warning. They don't say, hey, by the way, uh, these five videos have been earmarked because they contravene the new policy. So, you know, uh, we advise you to make them unlisted or take them down. And if they appear again on the channel, you'll get a strike. Okay, fair enough. In a very unfair world. But uh, to have a little bit of warning about this, you know, would be useful. But they don't do that. And so these videos, the one where I'm speaking about um, what's written in the book of Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas, and then where I'm speaking uh, about the David and uh, um, Jamie Ike video. <coughs> and these things uh, people should be concerned about really, because they are literally plagues coming over the world. And they are not just uh, those, they are many others. Of course, you know, you've got the euthanasia policy. You've got the uh, promotion of porn, uh, which obviously is a policy because it's very, very powerful. Um, you've got um, all different sorts of uh, genders and pronouns and, um, you know, the whole freak show that's going on the sex changes and uh, you know you could probably reel off another half dozen yourselves uh, but we've got all this going on people and yet when I put up the videos uh, speaking about it, uh, it it appears that I haven't even got a single new viewer um, and you know that just tells me that my channel most certainly is shadow banned because the only people I can reach really our existing viewers and um, uh, very very seldom do I think my videos go out um, under the algorithms into other people's um, feeds uh, but uh, you know it is what it is I've looked around for alternatives and this there simply isn't any uh, and um, the vast majority of people are too stubborn and too indoctrinated, too programmed, too lazy uh, to e even bother going over onto another channel. And I've known lots of um, people with massive uh, subscribe um, counts, I'm talking in the millions, and then when they shift onto like Rumble or something like that, they get less than 10% follow. Because going onto uh, these platforms is just crap. It's just a ball ache. Um, they don't offer anything like the facility. They're very, very difficult to navigate and, you know, to find how you do this and find how you do that. It just isn't elementary and simple. And, um, you know, uh, I don't know what's so difficult. Um, you know, I'm waiting for Elon Musk to set up a competitor to YouTube. Because uh, at the end of the day, um, people like that are the only people that, you know, are gonna have the money to be able to do it in a very, very short period of time. You, you just get um, a thousand people to write these programs and, um, you know, copy whatever's out there, which is copyable without being um, sued for copyright, but, um, and set up a, another channel, you know, like Twitter, only like YouTube. Uh, and so, come on, Mr. X, um, you know, because it, it, it's, it's just getting out of control. The amount of comments that just get disappeared on YouTube. You've all experienced it. And most of the time we don't know why the comments have been disappeared. Uh, I started, what I did on one occasion, I, I changed what I was writing six times to see if I could get that comment through. And I just couldn't. I tried putting all different sorts of hashtags and, you know, anasans. Um, between certain words and I wasn't being abusive or you know offensive I was just stating what's going on in the world but they don't want you to state that they don't want you to promulgate that and of course um, if you do and you're in Britain uh, if you are saying anything which could be considered to be hate speech even if you are um, uh, forwarding somebody else's video that have said something about something uh, then you'll be arrested and go to prison. And apparently, so far already, since this new policy has come to play, and I don't know how long it's been in, not long at all, 4,000 British people have been imprisoned 
uh, been jailed for that. And um, so there was one clip I saw, and it was on the uh, the David Icke uh, video, and it was evidently an old person, sounded like an old woman, no, it could have been an old man, um, it sounded like about 70, 80 years old, and uh, they'd been posting uh, something offensive on Facebook. And um, uh, it, it appeared that they, they got 20, he or she got 20 months in prison. Can you imagine, like, if you're 75 years old, you get 20 months in prison. It's absurd, people. It really is absurd. And yet you, the viewer, well, you consider uh, vastly more worthwhile watching me eat a fucking chicken. I've, I've got to tell you, people, uh, you know, we should be concerned about that. You should be concerned about that. If you've got children, you most certainly should be concerned about that. When... I get like 250 hits on a video which is clearly just about eating chicken and there's like 22 thumbs up and you know 18 comments and then when I'm putting something up which is really interesting uh, potentially quite terrifying and um, most certainly something that everybody should be abreast of in this day and age nobody even wants to click on those videos so if you wouldn't mind uh, telling me why you never clicked on those videos and if you did click on them why you weren't compelled to say something or if you tried to say something and, you, and your comments kept getting erased then okay just a little bit of feedback people um, you know, we have to go through this all the time, don't we? It's only like a few days ago I was fucking and cussing and calling you all, all the cunts under the sun. And then the thumbs up went up, you know, marginally, and the comments went up, and then a few days later we're back to the same old same old, aren't we? You know, everybody's just fast to fucking sleep. And, you know, I, I look on other channels and I see that, um, you know, there's an enormous amount of comments. Uh, but granted, they've got more viewers. And so, you know, is it that, you know, there's only 1% of the populace that ever comments? Um, because when other channels have got like, um, I don't know, 1 million uh, subscribers, or even if they've got 250,000, um, the comments are full. You know, there's like 200 comments or something like that. But when you look at it, I suppose it still is a very, very small proportion. So, proportionately, I, I don't really think there's any difference between my channel and the channel that's got a million subscribers uh, in the viewers, uh, because people are people. Uh, I don't think there's anybody more or less intelligent uh, on this channel than there is on anybody else's channels. Um, uh, it's just very, very bizarre. And, you know, I, I state something very, very clear in those um, Gospel of Thomas videos. And I'm asking you something very, very clear. And yet, not a single person has responded uh, to my uh, questions or requests. And whatever has been said, it's just, it's just on another plane. And this is the thing, isn't it? And one of the viewers mentions the Tower of Babel. And I'm often mentioning the Tower of Babel. And, uh, you know, the, uh, Babel comes from the Tower of Babel because it was said that God uh, cursed um, everybody in the land uh, for their audacity to try to build up this um, tower, the Tower of Babel, um, to get to the heights of godliness, you know, to encroach on God's realm in the skies. And so he struck everybody with a different language so nobody would be able to communicate with each other. And that's a very, very, very profound uh, thing to, to say um, 2,000 years ago, people. Uh, and look at where we are. Look at where we are we most certainly have the curse of Babel. Because there's quite a lot of you which are intelligent, there's quite a lot of you which I speak to and can hold an intelligent conversation. 
and yet we still see things very very differently and you know lots of us could have read the same books or and the, the same videos and been on a similar journey and yet when we watch a video we'll see something very very different and uh, i find it astounding i really do particularly in view of the fact i say well look here's this video this is what they're saying and this is what i think and this is what i'm saying uh do you have anything to say on what they're saying and what i'm saying right in this context do you have anything to say in this context this is the point that i'm extracting out of this conversation and so what do you have to say about that nothing nothing and that has been the case with 99% of my videos over this past, you know, a dozen years or so. I suppose it's, um, how long has it been? Oh, it's been a good 10 years since I've been on YouTube. <coughs> and so, you know, people, we can look at what the, uh, the world leaders are doing. And we may consider that there is a certain evil in their manipulation and their suppression and what they are doing but you know i can all see it from their perspective and there's not many of us that can hold a decent intelligent conversation there's not many of us that can follow a lineage uh, of any problem or issue there really isn't without stupid biases or emotions uh, just throwing a spanner in the works or a fire in the hole really the vast majority of people are so governed and stricken by their egos and their emotions that uh, intelligence is uh, something that I would consider um, if it hasn't happened already in a very very short period of time would be something that uh, you could no longer say about the human being anymore. Um, at least 99% of them. And, you know, I was watching a bit of a video of Kamala Harris. And she's out campaigning and she's in front of the masses. And um, it's like a Punch and Judy show. Because she says something about mean people or you know people with orange hair or whatever and all the crowds are boo boo ooh, oh, no. and it's kind of like she's she's an orchestrator she's standing there on the podium and she's giving stupid one-liners out to the absolute fool it's like a sketch out of idiocracy that movie it really is you listen you listen I mean, Trump, you know, he's no different. They're, they're, they're all the same, because this is the mentality of the average American people. Uh, that's the only thing they respond to, uh, the Punch and Judy show. They know nothing about policy, they know nothing about politics, they don't know anything about how the world is. They are completely oblivious to it, and the only thing that they are involved with is their emotions, um, and uh, if they like the face of whoever it is, or uh, the smile, that's really what it amounts to people at the end of the day. Um, and I listened to one interview out in the street. This was at a, a Kamala Harris campaign venue. And the interviewer was saying to the people, so um, um, what uh, policy of Kamala's do you like the best? Uh, oh, um, uh, uh, well, the policy. And that's how it was. And um, th then it was kind of like, well, I mean, is there any memorable policies? Uh, what is it you really voting for? You know, other than a pretty face. What are you voting for, people? They're not. And then one guy said, well, you, I'm just here for the vibe, you know. Uh, this is the state of America. And we've all seen these ridiculous um, interviews where, you know, the, the public ask just general knowledge questions and they haven't got a, a, a single clue. But not only that, people, that they are... Well, look. One of the questions was, how many moons uh, does the Earth have? And then people are like, uh, nine, nine, ten. And then uh, one person went, uh, 38. They just pick figures out of fucking air. Uh, they have no idea at all. It's absurd. Can you believe it? Uh, uh, for intelligent people to look at that, you just go, what schools did they go to? How did they, they grow up? 
and I, I don't know, I'm, I'm at a loss. I really am at a loss. And then of course I listen to a lot of intellectuals. I listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson and uh, you know Russell Brand and um, Douglas Murray and uh, Weinstein Brothers and um, you know this sort of ilk and they're like the world's fault. There are no intelligent people. There, there just aren't. And even Jordan Peterson says the vast majority of people are stupid. And, you know, this is why he set up the Peterson Academy, to try to bring things back around, you know, with solid um, uh, courses uh, to, to take from solid intellectuals uh, to, to bring the world back on track. But it appears um, we've lost it. And, you know, when you read books written in, like, 1700s or 1800s, you see the, the vocabulary they use. You see the amount of people that they just expect all their readers to be acquainted with. They're mentioning this author and that author and all different sorts of uh, easy to things as if it's just something that everybody would know. And I'm sure that the intellectuals of the day did. You know, people like Freud and Jung of the day, uh, massively prolific readers of all different sorts of stuff. But now, you know, who's reading? Who's really reading? And um, so, if you would answer a few of these questions then. So, why didn't you watch those videos about the Book of Thomas? Um, at the end of the day, why didn't you watch one of my videos? Just because it had other people instead of my boat race on the video. Uh, is that what turned you off? Oh, I like your rants, or I just like your walking, talking videos, or this and the other. I don't want anything, you know, with other people in it. Why, but just help me out here, people. Um, I thought I'd try something new to see if uh, I throw a bit of spice in and, and try and intrigue people into uh, engaging a little bit more. But what happened? Engage less. The only level I can get you people, and it's very, very sad, and it's very, very disconcerting, the only level I can get you people engaged with if I am fucking and cussing um, and calling everybody blue under the sun, then that gets the most hits and the most comments and the most thumbs up. Uh, other than me when I'm eating a burger or me when I'm eating a chicken. What do you have to say about that, people? you know put something down as to why that is what is your state of consciousness because I don't know people I, I think you should be concerned about it I really do but if you're not you're not I am